Okay, on the bench today is an iRobot Roomba lithium-ion battery. I picked up a couple of Roombas that were uh, being given away, and this was in one of them. It actually worked just fine, but the runtime started dwindling, so I thought I would take this apart and see if I could put new cells in it. It's a genuine iRobot part. This is the model 1800 lithium-ion battery. And um, I thought, no big deal, I'll just swap out the cells, but it actually turned out to start being kind of a challenge, so I thought I'd make a video to show what I found. First thing, where are the screws? There's one here, and then there's uh, two more in the bottom corners. If I can peel that up. So just three screws that hold the lid on. They're little tiny screws. And actually, you need to get just the right screwdriver to uh, match those heads or you can strip them out real easily. In any case, that takes the lid off. And first thing I noticed was this plate of steel on the inside. And I thought, what's going on here? Are they just trying to weight the battery so it feels more substantial? Well, they may be doing that, but what I think I've actually realized from uh, using uh, NIM batteries that I used to replace this one in that Roomba is that there's actually just barely enough weight to keep the, uh, the back end of the Roomba down on the ground. That is where the dustbin goes. Uh, even with the NIM battery swapped in, it, it almost wants to lift up, you know, kind of go stink bug. So I think this is actually weight that's necessary to keep the Roomba flat on the ground. But anyways, we can come back to that. On the inside, you see this little cell holder uh, and more steel uh, plates. Uh, this was actually kind of tricky as well. You got to get way down in there, down in these slots on either side are more screws. And then the, oh, there's one that's at least in focus. In the front, there's another screw. So basically right adjacent to the external screw holes are internal screws that hold the cell holder in place. Then this, uh, it took a, a bit of work the first time, but now it's a little looser. You can grab it however you can. This actually slides out, revealing that you really just have four 18650s in a little cell holder. They're using these in series, call that about 16.8 volts if these are fully charged to uh, 4.2. And then there's this little circuit board on the back. I've never actually looked into what these do. I know obviously two of these are positive negative. I don't know which two. And then the other two contacts are present on all Roomba batteries. I don't know if that's temperature or some sort of um, you know activation uh, negotiation between the, the vacuum and the battery. But in any case, there's four pads. I'm going to take this apart, uh, take off these nickel strips. First thing is to figure out what kind of batteries these are and then see about putting some replacements in here and uh, spot welding down some new nickel strips onto some new batteries. So let's see if we can do it. Before I take it apart, I thought I'd quickly measure the cell voltages and you can access the ends of the cells, of course, and you could probably even slip a meter uh, probe into these middle positions, but you can actually use uh, the board connections as well. So what you've got here is this is the middle connection for the two cells up here and then the middle connection for the other two cells. Here's the most negative part of the pack. We'll measure to this middle point and you kind of got to give it some pressure because I think there's a coating on here. We'll call it a two point six, five. And then the next one will be here, 2.62. And the next one is from here to here, 2.63 and 2.60. So all these are fairly low. Just wanted to show where you can measure things. Since there are solder joints at the ends here, I think I'll start there and to see what can be gained by desoldering those. So like usual, I'm going to start by alloying in my own uh, kind of low temperature lead and tin solder into these factory joints so that hopefully they'll melt at a lower temperature. There's the first one. It's like, as soon as my typical off the shelf home user solder hits these factory joints, they melt pretty quickly. And we'll melt as much of it as we can into the solder wick and then it uh, looks like the joints might just fall apart, but we'll have to test that with tweezers in a moment. Keep in mind they're really our batteries on the other ends of these strips and they've got a little bit of power in them. so. Uh, you have to be careful not to create any shorting situations. Even though the batteries are more or less dead, they're not completely dead and that's an important distinction. Okay, so there's a little bit of a like a hook here and uh, I'm gonna put a lot of heat into the strip, hoping it'll stay molten for a moment so I can unhook this. There we go. And fortunately there wasn't enough solder, it looks like, to remelt. So that's actually free. Cool, so I'm gonna come back to that. The goal is to do that two more times. Okay, all those tabs are free, so now I should be able to kind of disconnect them. Okay, 
we just zoom in to the dining room. We still have a, looks like a thermistor attached to the board onto this cell. So we'll pull this off. There's just some tape holding it on. So the thermistor should come right out of here. There it is. And then I'm gonna take out these um, solder joints in the center to disconnect those center tap points. The solder wick really lives up to its name. It just wicks up the solder um, from any place it's touching. It'll it'll bring it up into the wick, even if it's um you know down below and on the other side of the board. Cool. So four tabs it looks like all disconnected. And now, oh yeah, there we go. The board lifts right out. And here are the cells removed from the cell holder. I actually took them apart more than I needed to. Once the board is removed, they just peel right out as one continuous string. And when I look up close, you won't be able to see on camera, but I can just barely make out Sanyo UR18650A. I like this website, secondlifestorage.com. They've got all sorts of information, including a database of 18650s that you can often identify cells just based on their colors. So I have some information about the UR18650A here. This is a 2100 milliamp rated cell, 4.2 volts maximum, 2.5 volts cutoff. That's pretty standard stuff. But I can see by looking at this, this is more like a laptop battery cell than it is a tool battery cell. That is, it's really optimized for a slow, long discharge versus a fast, high current discharge. After browsing for various replacement options, I landed on this one. This is the Samsung INR18650-30Q. It's a 3000 milliamp hour capacity cell with up to 15 amps discharge capability. So quite a lot more capable than the cells that came with the Roomba, but it still has the same upper voltage of 4.2, the same cutoff voltage, and the standard charging and discharging rates are similar or exceed those that came with the Roomba. As soon as I received the new cells, I put them onto my Opus battery capacity testers, and the capacities are a little bit underneath what the factory rating is. I was charging and discharging at 500 milliamps, which is a little under 0.2C. So I expected to see 3000, I'm not quite seeing that, but I'm still pretty happy with the consistency and this is gonna be a major upgrade nonetheless. Okay, I'm at the point of actually rebuilding the pack. So I've marked the old board with positive, negative, and then M for the midpoint of the pack. And that tells me where batteries need to go in this cell holder. So I've got my brand new cells here and they'll be laid out like this, positive to negative, and then the same around the other side. So we'll end up with the most negative side here and the most positive side there. And of course, these need to basically be hinged on a nickel strip like that. So I think what's easiest is to first do these joints, and then I can fold them, uh, put them into the pack, uh, connect up the midpoints here, and then making the end connections onto the board will be, the I think, the last step that I do. Just thought I would show you what I'm using for spot welding. This is a capacitor-based spot welder, and so it's charging up the capacitors inside right now. Once it gets to five volts, I'll be ready. So I'm running it at level 40 out of 120. It goes up pretty high, and this is, I think, 0.2 millimeter uh, nickel strip. I'll try to get uh, four spot welds on each battery. There it is. Next, I need to add on this little tab for interfacing into the center slots in the board. I'm not gonna reuse this, but I've got a wire that I think I can solder on. Usually you can solder onto a nickel, okay, even though it's much harder to solder onto the uh, battery itself. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of flux flow in there first, and I'll see if I can tin one spot on this nickel. It's sticking a little bit, just takes a bit of heat not enough heat to hurt the battery, but that's enough to solder on this little wire. There we go. And one more time for the other side. Going back to the cell holder, here's how things to go together. These two batteries open up like this, basically fold that connection point so that they're like this. And then do the same over here with these two. Just gonna fold until they come back together evenly. I thought about it a bit and I convinced myself that I don't need insulation on these wires that go up to the center of the board. Just like the original tabs were on these pieces of uh, nickel strip, they weren't insulated and so there's really no reason to have insulation going up to the center of the board. This should make them fit a lot easier. So let's start with this side. 
make sure we're fitting into the, the ends to hold the batteries in on either end and help that wire through the slot a little bit. Okay, looking good. That's one. And on the other side, no problem. Okay, we're all the way in, and there you can see one wire and a second wire. Those will slip into the slots here on the board. Next, we'll connect the two pairs together with a thin strip across here. Again, I like to start with the positive side. It's the one that's a little bit less forgiving. Over to my negative side. This is also where we'll have a connector up to the board on top. Okay, so plenty of room for that. At this point, we should measure 16 volts on the end. So I'll just double check that real quick. 16.8, fully charged batteries. We're good to go. Okay, it's time to add some strips to the batteries that will meet these strips that lead to the board. So I've cut these little thin strips to do that with. I'm gonna attach them on the middle point here and then positive and negative and have them come up and then fold over these pads. And then I'll set the board down and solder these strips to the strips that are on the pads. At least that's the plan. So I think I'll use the vise. We'll go ahead and just start by putting in the middle strip. Also making sure that it's not touching anything in the bottom. I do have some captain tape there just as an extra safety, but I don't want to risk it. Okay, so we're gonna have a strip that starts here and folds over. This is gonna be a little tricky to hold in place. I think I might just tuck it under the plastic a little ways. Yeah, that works. Let's start by doing a couple of spot weld directly onto the battery itself. And now we can go through, I think I'll turn up the heat and we'll go through the existing strip and the new strip. Or we'll bore a hole right through it. Let's see what happens. So I'm up at 60 out of 120 now. That seemed to work pretty well. Okay, that's the first one. It folds over. I've got plenty of extra so that I can trim it. Positive, you have to be careful because negative is sitting right underneath that white collar. We're still up at 60. Let's, uh, let's see what this does. Yeah, it's probably a little bit much if you're only going through a single layer. Back to 40. Okay, so there's the positive lead. The last one will be the easiest. That's the negative lead. There we go. So now we've provided all the contact points that the board needs. It's time to actually reinstall the board. First though, I do wanna just kinda of trim these down a little bit. To keep them folded over, I'm going to use captain tape, at least temporarily. Okay, now I'm going to be on top of plastic pads, so I want to pre-tin these so I can spend as little time actually putting heat down on the plastic as possible. Excellent. Now, it's time to put that board on. I'd like to control when these actually touch, so I'm going to bend these up a little bit. And I'm going to connect the middle two wires first. So there's those two wires there. Wire one, there's wire two, and board snaps into place. And the wire just barely, because I trimmed it earlier, just barely peeks through those slots to where we can just do a dab of solder to ensure a good connection. So the solder is already in between here, so theoretically I should just be able to push down, melting, 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 all the way through. Negative next. No sparks, that's nice. Try not to melt a bunch of plastic into the joint. Okay, last one. Here's positive. So now they're all touching. Battery is live. I need to make sure I don't short anything at the last minute here. Okay, next. I can pull off this temporary captain tape. I can tuck my thermistor down into the same spot where it was before and then tape over it. That'll function the way we want. 
Last step is a little bit of cleanup with some isopropyl alcohol. Reassembly is basically the opposite of disassembly with a couple caveats. One, there are different kinds of screws. There's three of each. There's this one, which is like a very shallow flat head. And then there's another one that's basically more like a standard pan head. The flat head is what goes on the outside, that holds the cover on, and it needs to slip underneath the sticker, hence the flat head. The pan heads are what hold the cell holder inside the main battery pack case. And that's the other thing about reassembly is that you actually need to have these screws in place first. You won't be able to slip them down in there once the cell holder is inside the outer pack. Get them started. And then of course, I'll just be able to push the cell holder all the way down. The top cover. The next step is to actually test out this rebuilt lithium battery pack in a real Roomba. And this is a model 690. This is the Roomba that this battery pack came out of. So I know that it is compatible with lithium batteries in general. However, not all Roombas are. You'll wanna go on iRobot's website they have a listing of model by model compatibility with lithium batteries. And as I recall, most of the 600, 700 model Roombas are compatible to some extent. And I believe all of the 800, 900s are completely compatible, but you'll want to double check for your model. So I'll install the battery into the 690. And if everything's okay, we should hear those happy Roomba sounds in just a moment here. And there it is. This room goes back to crashing into things just like normal, but in this case, that's good news. I hope this was helpful to anyone out there that might want to change the cells in their iRobot lithium battery pack. If you're inclined, hit that like button. If you have questions, throw them in the comments. In any case, thanks for watching.